talking with the experts. Elena and Simon Rowland explain why having deep and meaningful friendships as an entrepreneur is pivotal to your mental well-being and happiness. <laughs> and we, we can so easily get caught up in reaching the next goal and, and that we forget that we need people along with us on the journey to mm. actually feel happiness. Yeah. So I think that's the first step is just saying, okay, where could I find little corners? Where could I find places where I could might take up friendships that I've already had? Because mm. that's, that's the first step. It's just a mindset shift of, hey, this is important. I need to put this in my calendar. Yeah, for sure. And I think another thing as well is to understand what kind of friends you actually need. Mm -hmm. We hear so many people with good intentions saying stupid things like, well, if you want more friends, you just you should just get a hobby. It's like my business <laughs> is my hobby, so. <laughs> Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And talking about YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you know when all the videos have been uploaded. Today, my guests are Helene and Simon Rowland from Denmark. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about friendships and Mm -hmm. why having a deep and meaningful friendship as an entrepreneur is really pivotal, is really essential for our mental well-being and our happiness. And right. uh, Simon is a serial entrepreneur, a tech savvy yeah. and a trained <laughs> teacher. And Aline is a certified coach and a Enneagram practitioner and she knows all about feelings on top of that they are experienced speakers and facilitators so without further ado welcome Helene and Simon to talking with the experts it's so great to have you here thank you we yeah. are delighted to be here yeah happy to be able to maybe share a little bit of uh, giving some gold nuggets into the inter entrepreneurial world yeah, yeah it's really important I think it's now more than ever since you know the pandemic hit in 2020 I think um, you know entrepreneurs are doing it pretty tough um, mm. you know before they could mm -hmm. I mean it, it's getting better now that you can go outside but you know you never used to be able to and I think a lot of them suffered a lot from um, mental trauma not trauma so well maybe trauma and you know mental um, illness and loneliness and depression mm -hmm. and all those sorts of things mm. and not realizing that having a friend in business is really good for you. Mm -hmm. right, exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> it is. A, it, as we see it, we see a lot of entrepreneurs as well who are lonely. And it's easy because you sit alone at home, right? Mm -hmm. And you forget that we're, we're created for community. Mm -hmm. We are a tribe species <laughs> and we need to have people around us to support us. And also because a lot of entrepreneurs, we're, we're the odd one out at the dinner table, right? Yeah. Like yeah, we're the ones who are doing life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We're the ones who do life different. So yeah. people can't always associate to what we experience, to all this, like the personal development that's connected with running your own business. Mm. And you, we can't carry that alone. And we're not created to carry that alone. No, and it, it is really that interesting thing when people... When people sit down and talk with an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. if they don't have the entrepreneurship themselves, they'll often be either amazed that you want to do it or feel like you're a little bit of a superhero, mm -hmm. but they're never always they're never on the same level. They're not really understanding mm -hmm. the drive behind it. Uh, and 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 taking that risk of being an entrepreneur. Most entrepreneurs are saying it's not a risk, it's what I have to do. <laughs> and people who are not entrepreneurs will often say, Well, that's a big risk. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and so there are some mindset things. And, and that means it's often lonely being on the path of entrepreneurship and, and studies just show how important friendships are. And, and so it's probably even more 
important in an entrepreneurial world to find the people that understand you, that you are on the wavelength with, not just as a business wise, but also just people who get you outside of business and have that kind of connection with you. So that's why we believe in, in this setting, it's very important. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. I think, you know, it, being an entrepreneur is a very lonely existence. Uh, and you're right, people don't understand us as well as they, they might do. And, um, you know, we often find it that talking to ourselves is about the only friendship that we get. So how do we go about, how do we go about finding these friends and, and creating mm. all these friendships? Yeah. I think first step is a mindset shift. It is realizing it is really important mm. so that we create space and time in our calendar to actually prioritize this mm. <clears throat> and see that it's important part of us thriving in business is not just running after our business because our business, we are entrepreneurs ourselves. It's our baby, isn't mm. it? <laughs> and we, we can so easily get caught up in reaching the next goal and, and that we forget that we need people along with us on the journey to mm. actually feel happiness. Yeah. So I think that's the first step is just saying, okay, where could I find little corners? Where could I find places where I could might take up friendships that I've already had? Because mm. that's, that's the first step. It's just a mindset shift of, hey, this is important. I need to put this in my calendar. Yeah, for sure. And I think another thing as well is to understand what kind of friends you actually need. Mm -hmm. We hear so many people with good intentions saying stupid things like, well, if you want more friends, you just you should just get a hobby. It's like my business <laughs> is my hobby, so. <laughs> and, and on top of that, you just don't find like-hearted people. If, if you both like soccer, it doesn't mean mm. that you necessarily have the same mentality, the same morals, the same ethics, and the same way of living life, just because you both like playing chess, just the same thing, right? So we have to dig a, a layer deeper and actually figure out what kind of friendships do I need? Because mm. knowing myself is also knowing the friends that I need to be around. Yeah. So we often say that you have to kind of take that layer deeper for us if we were to go out and find completely new friends, mm. uh, because we are churchgoers and 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 we that's an important part for us, we would probably look in church, but we're entrepreneurs as well. So mm. we would dig into entrepreneurial circles to find that kind of thing. And we're heart-centered entrepreneurs. Mm. So we would look for entrepreneurship that's not about making money, but actually making this world a better place. Exactly. So finding some values, common grounds and ethics where this is deeper than just whether we like the same sports team yeah. and it, it's deeper than just can we hang out together mm. uh, that's a good start sure but for a friendship to be really deep we need to dig beyond that and it's not just an age thing it's not just an, an interest thing it's deeper than that and getting that mindset right is a big help in terms of finding the right people um yeah yeah and You're i think the last thing is creating is though isn't it Yes, I mean, it is. We, we sort of learn as children how to make friends, but once we leave the corporate world and you know become this entrepreneur, I think you know making mm. friends or or finding that that skill that we used to have as children is a little bit different. Mm, very. Absolutely. We actually say it's five skills, and we have five skills that we talk a lot about. Mm. Um, and I think nobody teaches us how to build adult friendships. Mm. And we, we have kids and right. our nine-year-old, the way he makes friends is nothing <laughs> compared to how we, we need to make friends as mm. adults. And, and be, but because we don't talk, like you say, we learn it in school, mm. but we don't learn it as adults. So we kind of have the same mindset that mm. friendships are just supposed to happen when we're around people. Right. And then what's wrong with me when it doesn't happen? Mm. I know that's, that's a situation I've been in mm. feeling that there's something wrong with me because don't just happen right and learning which skills we need to develop is just key first of all to realizing there's nothing wrong with you if Absolutely. you're finding it hard to build Absolutely. friendships and I want yeah, to say that to right. anybody <laughs> listening yeah. you are amazing foster. it's hard to foster friendships as an adult it is and adult it's, friendships is this mystery box. <laughs> and I think it's definitely a mindset change and that mind shift change. And that's also why we say it's skill based, because mm. often when we go out and talk to people, we feel like we're actually in, interacting in conversations. But oftentimes when you look at conversations going on around new people, it's these small talk, 
mm. small talk topics that are always the same. It's always the war in Ukraine, or it's it's always <laughs> oh how tough was you uh, how tough was COVID or or the weather, huh? Uh, so we never get beyond that, and that mm. actually is scientifically proven that that does not build any kind of relationships. Mm-mm. Small talk has a a a, a job to fill, sure, but. For us to actually go into conversations that build friendships, that build community, that build those kind of relationships that you want, we have to go deeper than that. So it's a skill set of knowing how to listen. It's a skill set of knowing how to ask the right kind of questions. And people, when we have people in our program that realize that their minds are blown every time of how simple and how effective it is at the same time. And how hard. Yeah. (laughs) Because it might be simple, but it's not easy. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it would be a lot of work for people that aren't um, used to building adult type friendships. I think, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in the workplace, it's a little bit easier because, you you know, you're around those people all the time. And so you have conversations Mm -hmm. with them. But, you know, as an entrepreneur that who primarily works on their own, Mm -hmm. you use that, you know, you lose that that skill of you know creating friendships so what are your five key steps then yeah the first one is become a listener and Mm. as we say you may know how to use you have ears but it doesn't mean you know how to listen so Mm. the first part is actually digging into what it is to listen good questions good conversations and the second one is how to build trust because we all know what trust feels like when it's there when it's not there we can feel it in our nerve system right but how do we actually do it? How do we focus on honing in on the skill of building trust mm. is, is a mystery to most of us if we don't focus on it. Yeah. The third one we call identifying your inner language. And it's uh, understanding, actually. We see understanding your inner language is that you actually start to put yourself into play. Often when you mm. go out and new, meet new people, you will start with a question. So like, what do you do? And to be <laughs> yeah. honest, it doesn't matter at all. It mm-hmm. has nothing to do with you literally it's so uninteresting but what is interesting instead would be what makes you smile Mm. what would make you lie down on your pillow at night and feel like i had a great day see that's a question where you actually go to the root of a person instead of just whether you are a ceo or a bus driver i'm sorry it doesn't say a lot about you but we don't have a vocabulary for it so Mm. most people wouldn't know what to do I've actually started a lot of conversations saying, can we agree on not saying what we do for a living and try that experiment out? And after Mm. an hour or two people be like, man, I've never had a conversation like that just because it was so new territory. And Mm. and we we use, as you said in the beginning, we use the Enneagram to to help people understand themselves, which is a personality Mm. profiling system where we help people understand who they are and and put that into Mm. language. Um, So that's our third pillar. Yeah, it's just, we feel it's such an important point that you can only connect as deeply with others as mm. you connect with yourself. Yeah. So you, if you want deep, fulfilling, strong friendships, you have to look yourself in the eye and know who you are. Right. It can only can only be about what you do. Mm. Then the fourth one is actually the ability to friendship date, to make a plan. It is a thing. <laughs> and to and you talk when we talked about where to find the right friends. We talked about what are your values. We also talk about creating rhythms around this. Mm. We go into creating good habits because even in our, our world just goes by. It happens for all of us, whether we're in corporate or entrepreneurial, our time just flies, doesn't it? So having these habits around how do we spend time with friends or where do we meet new friends mm. on a weekly basis is just so important, but also meeting new people, mm. seeing how it goes, practice listening, practice building trust, evaluating, do I want this? Don't I want this? Mm. And actively pursuing this. And this is where we get very one. This yeah. is where we get very practical. It's a very practical skill. <laughs> because we understand that so often we we like as human beings to stay in the theory. It, it's almost like it watching <laughs> it's like watching sports online and believing that you would know how to do it in, in, <laughs> in, in practice. But you don't. Just if you're sitting on the sofa watching the TV, you can't throw a ball. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so having that mindset as well, when you go out and you actually have to practice this, and mm. this is also where it becomes vulnerable. And that's why we actually yeah. put a lot of focus on the fourth step of us supporting and challenging in the good way of helping when it comes to building these friendships and actually going out and trying them out. And, mm. and that's a key part of it actually for us to, to support in that, sen- uh, in that um, yeah. s- season as well. 
And, and the so fifth. The, fifth, the fifth is about identifying your differences. Yeah. It's about figuring out how different we are as people. And we're very different. <laughs> we're very different. Just the two of us, we use the tools a lot as well mm. as best friends in our marriage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but just because we can't go deep with people if we think that everybody is like us. No. And naturally, we tend to do that, but it creates misunderstanding, it creates conflict. Mm. So we can only really connect with people if we understand where they're coming from and have a language around that hmm. we talk a lot about language actually because if you <laughs> can't put words to it you can't work with it right. you can't communicate it hmm. and so often we let things be be a guesswork because we don't have language around it hmm. so we need more language around friendships about how to build them but also about how different we are as people Absolutely. so what yeah. kind of language uh you know would would one use or uh, or learn to be able to foster these friendships. Yeah. So when we say language, it's not like English, Danish, British. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, I understand vocabulary what you're it's, more than yeah. A, yeah, yeah. It's it's we use the Enneagram uh, where we 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 start to help people to understand the 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 inner workings and and putting that into words and and that is in terms of how do I get vulnerable enough to open up to people? How do I put myself enough into play? We mm. we. <clears throat> we often say the whole thing about opening up if 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 you're coming into a conversation with a mask on people will fall in love with the mask and not with you but often people wouldn't know how to take that mask off and that's again into do i actually know myself do i know what i like and what i dislike mm -hmm. when it really comes to it because we often are so good at being in the right way in the right context in this in this scenario i have to behave like this and dress like this and this is mm. how we talk but over here we talk in a different way and we are so good as human beings at fitting in but to to make friendships you actually have to fit out in the sense that you have to be yourself otherwise they will fall in love with the facade you put on mm. and that's not a friendship unless yeah, it's a it's sad not, one it's <laughs> just a, a uh, two people talking together and not really yes. yeah exactly each other. Mm. Hmm. And so I, this I enneagram we, yes. that you talk about maybe could you please yes. explain what that is for the people who don't know yeah the enneagram consists of nine different personality profiles that you will see everywhere in the world and each type is really defined by a core motivation and hmm. a core fear that drives you in this world hmm. and so for me for example my core driver is to feel valuable and that drives a lot of my behavior. For Simon, one of his core drivers is to have freedom from pain. Hmm. And that creates two very different motivations in this world. Hmm. So we could have the same behavior, but we could do it from two very different places because I might help because I want you to see that I'm valuable. And Simon might help to uh, get the pain away so we could have fun. We can move on to the next one. <laughs> and, and so the, the language is also about where does my behavior come from? Mm. What is my deeper motivation? And the vocabulary is also around not only knowing when I'm sad, mad, or glad, but having all the different shades of feelings mm. that we never learn to talk about anywhere, mm. but we all have. Um, so the Enneagram is this profiling system where, where we have this motivation. And what we love about it is it has so many layers and it helps you to see what box you've put yourself in. Because we believe that we're created in the image of God. And that's a pretty big image, right? Yeah. And then we we get caught in this little box. We're like, this is me. So I'm structured. So I don't feel like me when I'm not structured. I like details. So if I don't tend to details, I don't, I'm not me or I'm effective. So when I'm ineffective, I'm not me. So we have all these different ways of being me or not being me. And what we love about the Enneagram as well is we get a language for how we define our box, but also mm. we talk about how can we get out of this box? How can we take in more space mm. of being who we're created to be and understand how our friends are taking this little box mm. and help them to step out of the box as well. Yeah. And that's where it becomes really fun in friendships, isn't it? When we can really just spur each other on and cheer each other on to become more what we're created to be right. rather than just being in each other's lives and actually also pushing each other in the right direction. Hmm. Absolutely. I, yes, uh, I agree. And I just love <laughs> to add to it as well. I think for men, it's it's even mm. more crucial to understand some of these sides because I think we have a tendency yep. even <laughs> more to put on these facades and, and yeah. to, to show what's worth showing and hide the rest off. I think this tendency of, of bottling bad things up 
to the limit of explosion. It's mm. a very common thing that I see with all the men we work with, all the men I have around me in, in that we have to be able to step in to a more vulnerable mindset where it's okay to put your needs on the agenda, but it, we're just not taught to do that. And we feel right. like that is unmasculine. Yeah. We feel like it's not what you're supposed to do as a man. You have to be the rock. You have to be the steady and calm. Mm. And, and the opposite of that is not vulnerability. Vulnerability is actually strength itself, but it's just not a, a type of strength that we're used to talking about. So we have to put that on. And, and to do that again, you have to know yourself enough to understand the shadow side and love mm. that side of yourself enough to bring it in there. Because if you're hiding it away, it's just a matter of time before he peeks his ugly head out. So, so it's- You know him. Oh, I do know. I know, I know <laughs> evil side. We all know him, but you may now definitely- um, not programmed well um it, we're getting better at teaching our sons to to be more vulnerable mm. to put their vulnerable side out um mm. i know I, I taught my own son that you know feelings are not meant to be hidden and if you're angry you know show you're angry but mm. do it in a constructive way and you yes, know treat women do. with respect you know don't yes. treat mm. them like your school friends treat them and mm. Yeah, and uh, you know all the really good things, and he's grown up to be an absolutely magnificent young man, and I love him to bits. Love it. You know, but mm -hmm. um, but and and I think parents now are starting to 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 realise that yes, that they Definitely. have to teach their sons uh, and treat them the same way as they treat their daughters. You know, we treat mm -hmm. women to be vulnerable, we treat our girls, but we don't treat mm -hmm. our sons. And I think parents are getting mm -hmm. getting that idea now that you know yeah. that we need to treat them equally and. Yeah. don't have a box for the girls and have a box for the boys you know it's, right. it doesn't yeah, serve that. a purpose anymore I don't think and and um, mm. so I mean that's just my belief no and I, and oh, I completely definitely. agree and I think that's also why it's pivotal and I would even say that parents who who might sit in a in a good life where well I have a bunch of friends and I, I think I have mine figured out would also struggle in a sense so how, how do I actually teach this to my kids how do I actually teach them to be vulnerable and that's where we also find that a language around it because you may have stumbled into it. And that's actually my friendship story that I had friends all around. And I, mm. I, I had it really easy um, uh, my whole childhood, but I had no clue how I did it because it just <laughs> kind of came out there. Mm. So when I had an awakening in my mid twenties of, wow, I'm actually not opening up as much as I would want to. Uh, I, I didn't know what, how to do it. Luckily I had the confidence to jump into it and just kind of figure it out. But but I needed to learn the skills as well to be intentional. And I see that now when I have to bring up my nine-year-old boy to be a man, how do I actually do it? I need the skill set. I, I can't just play happy-go-lucky with my mm -hmm. son's future. So I have to know it as well. So those skills that I learn, I can pass on. If I don't have the skills, I cannot, and I cannot yeah. emphasize that enough, you cannot pass on something you don't know. Absolutely. And so that's so important for parents as well to understand how do I give this value set to my kids? And you can't just say, be a good boy. No, what does that mean to be a good boy? Mm -hmm. And how do you practice that? So skill sets Absolutely. there is so yeah. important. You've got to me. practice with your kids otherwise, <laughs> yeah. you know, because kids are like, you know, monkey see, monkey do really, aren't they? You know, right. it's like, don't, <laughs> and you <laughs> tell them, don't do what I do, do what I say, you know, but it's yeah, not, they, they do what you do because, it, you know, they mirror, they, they are mirror images of us. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Yeah. yeah. Elaine and Simon, so where can people find you if they want to learn more about, you know, what you are offering? Yeah. So we have a bunch of uh, social media profiles uh, on uh, on Instagram. It's uh, it's yeah Instagram and then uh, forward slash Simon and Helena. And it's actually the same on on Facebook forward slash Simon and Helena. Uh, and then we have our own website, which is again, Simon and Helena.com. And there you can really find all your details. Yeah. around us. And there you also find access. We have a Facebook group where we try to sew in more and bring it more on the agenda as well. Mm. And where we have weekly live trainings. Mm. So you can also find the link to our authentic friendship network mm. where just we want to start the conversation because we yeah. feel it's not put on the agenda yeah. and even forming language around friendships is just so mm. important. Even if you don't feel like you need to be in a program or anything, yeah. it's just friendships are are actually one of the number one keys for happiness in life, but also living healthier. Mm. So I think it's just so relevant for all of us to geek on our friendships. Yeah, Absolutely. And so, and yeah, please, I agree. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I just want to add on to that. It, we we have a company, and 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 of course we want that. But we we see this as such a pivotal thing for our society. Mm. So we also just want to get loud about it. So please, if you're sitting out here listening right now, wondering whether this is for you and and so on, we don't mind people getting into our Facebook group who don't think they should be we our customers. <laughs> we actually just want to get loud. And because yeah. we think it's so important. We're so passionate about this. This is why this is what we've built a life around. So mm. come on in and geek on it uh, uh, together with us as well. If, if you're a professional in this area, come on in because yeah. we can only get better and louder together. So, so we would love to just build that community up and it's not about having clients it's about getting loud as well so yeah, yeah we're all Join the links will be shared in the show notes so it, anyone Thank will you. be able to to click onto them and and get mm. access to it to your friendship uh, friendship facebook page <laughs> perfect <laughs> um have you got any last words of wisdom that you'd like to share with uh, listeners and viewers today yeah we have this this funny saying that build in your strong season what you want in your weak season mm. and and we kind of translate that into friendships as well yeah so focus on your friendships before you need them mm. just the western focus on your friendships always yes yeah and that would be it, if anybody could take anything away from that just focus on your friendships always right build so into that yeah, because that is going to make a difference for you. Yeah, and 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 you're quite right. We are a, we are a tribal um, society, and uh, and mm. we've seemed to have lost that a little bit. The pandemic has yeah. you know really cut right into that, and uh, we yeah. need to build that back up again because um, yeah. it's all very nice to have you know face to face Zoom calls or whatever, but it's not quite the same as the human interaction. You know where you can actually touch, feel, and and taste and. All those no. absolutely absolutely yeah. i have had such a wonderful um experience talking with you both tonight thank you so much likewise. for giving up your yeah. time it's been an absolute pleasure thank love you likewise that. we love being here with you thank you for what you're sewing into the entrepreneurial world oh, yeah. it's so important that you bring these conversations on the agenda yeah. well, so thank, thank you for pouring into that thank you thank you very much You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the Experts.